Hello biology class, welcome back to Lex lesson six, uh, vitamins and minerals. This is the last one of this unit. So welcome back and congratulations, you have made it. Uh, at the end, there's kind of a major assignment. And when you're done that, you can hand in the booklet and do the nutrients test. Uh, we'll then get onto digestion and other fun things after that. Uh, so let's get into it, vitamins and minerals. You're gonna see a shocking picture right here. So, why do we need vitamins and minerals? Well, to prevent us from getting something like that. I have a little bit of a double chin, but it's not quite like that. Uh, this is a goiter, and we are going to get into why that happens and how to prevent that. And believe it or not, a simple mineral will be able to prevent it. But let's talk about vitamins first. Vitamins are classified as an organic compound because they contain the elements carbon and hydrogen, almost essentially or exclusively. Uh, the body only requires small amounts in order to help regulate different processes. Uh, we often have way too much vitamin C. You drink a cup of orange juice, you've got 120% of your vitamin C for the day, uh, while others we lack. Uh, vitamin D helps to regulate calcium deposits in bones. Without it, a condition known as rickets develops. So rickets uh, is a condition that is because of a lack of vitamin D. It does not allow calcium to get into the bones. Therefore, it, is, it results in weak and deformed bones. It's not that you don't have enough calcium, it's that you don't have enough vitamin D, which unlocks the door um, to the calcium getting into your bones. So vitamins do very interesting functions like that, very important and very different. So you'll notice I've talked about what vitamins are and about rickets, which is part of key point two. So rickets is when you don't have enough vitamin D. It results in bones that are bent uh, and is very uncomfortable. This is because the bones are essentially soft and can't handle the weight of a body very well. Scurvy is another disease. It, re it uh, results from a lack of vitamin C. Uh, we don't get that really anymore because there's so much vitamin C in all of our diets. Early symptoms of deficiency include weakness, feeling tired, and sore arms and legs. And without treatment, uh, you get decreased red blood cells, you get gum disease, uh, you, the, you, the cuticles in your nails be, uh, move back, uh, you bleed from your skin, your hair might fall out. It's very, very unpleasant. Uh, I'll show you some pictures right here. Yes, I believe you have in your notes uh, of people with scurvy. You can see the cuticles starting to wear away and the gums starting to recede or very well receding. And this is all due to a lack of vitamin C. Uh, scurvy takes at least a month of little to no vitamin C in the diet before symptoms. And that's why it used to be sailors who would get it because they didn't have fresh fresh fruits and vegetables or orange juice on their very long voyages across the ocean. In modern times, scurvy occurs most commonly in people with mental disorders and alcoholism and unusual eating, eating habits because they don't get the vitamins that they need. So vitamins are very important things and they're very specific uh, that are required to do very important jobs in your body. So that was rickets and scurvy related to vitamins um, D and C respectively. Vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid. Uh, it is found in various foods, also so sold as a dietary supplement. It is used to prevent and treat scurvy. Vitamin C is an essential nutrient involved in the repair of tissue. So you can't make vitamin C, you need to ingest it. It is a strong antioxidant and can strengthen your body's natural defenses, which is why it is given. Uh, anytime you go to a hospital in Thailand, they give you an IV with vitamin C in it. It's very interesting. So do you, any know, do you know anyone with rickets or scurvy? Um, I don't. And that's probably because right now we add all of these vitamins into our daily um, food intake. So in Canada, milk producers are required to add vitamin D into milk to make sure that calcium can also be absorbed into the bones. It does nothing just to give calcium if you don't also have that essential vitamin D and you can't make it. Uh, on your own. So minerals, key point three. Minerals are classified as inorganic compounds. So vitamins were organic, minerals are inorganic. They're often just 
elements. Uh, they're important for development and for maintenance of the body. So calcium would be a mineral. Uh, vitamins and, and minerals work together to do their job. So vitamins D lets in the calcium into your bones. Another mineral is iodine. It is a mineral that's needed by our thyroid glands and these glands regulate how slow or fast we burn our energy. Uh, iodine is added to our table salt to prevent this from happening to us. So this is a swollen thyroid gland. It is known as a goiter and it is often due to a lack of iodine in the diet or a lack of iodine uptake in your body. Uh, you might be eating it but unable to uptake it and therefore you get these goiters or enlarged thyroid uh, glands. So minerals can prevent this. It seems like something very simple, very uh, easy to ingest to prevent these kinds of things. Uh, sodium is another essential electrolyte, essential mineral that helps maintain the balance of water in and around your cells. It is important for proper muscle function and for proper nerve function. So sodium is another mineral that is very, very important. It helps maintain stable blood pressures and insufficient sodium is known as hyponatremia, um, where the water and sodium are out of, out of balance. Essentially, there's too much water or not enough sodium in your blood. Uh, so that can cause you to pass out and get sick. Um, sodium needs to be in balance. So all the high sodium foods that we eat can cause that to be out of balance and we need to uh, get rid of them through our pee and through our, ex, uh, our waste uh, to keep it all in check. What I'd like you guys to do now is do the research on the three vitamins and three minerals that are given. Uh, what are their functions? Where do you get them? Um, what are some disorders if you don't have them? And then the major assignment is to do the diet plan assignment. So to uh, watch your intake of food for three days and to calculate all of the different nutrients that you intake. Do you take in 100% of your vitamins every day or is it more like 50 for this one and 80 for this one and zero for this one? It will make us more aware of what our diets are, what a good diet is and how close we are to that good diet. There are, there's space given for you to do this in your booklet and there are instructions given. You'll definitely need to take pictures of uh, labels and look up what the nutrient value of different foods are that you intake. Um, but overall, um, it is about seeing how much of each nutrient we uh, take into our body and how we can improve that. If you guys have any questions about it, please let me know. And then when you're done all of this, hand in this booklet along with all your assignments and complete the test. Uh, for the nutrient unit. After you've completed the test, you can go on to the um, digestion unit and move forward. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. It's been uh, great doing this first unit with you, and I hope we can continue to have success together. Uh, thanks again. Bye.